Um, I you found your channel through my brother. I used to be a really, really, really good Muslim a few years ago. So, um, like no music and everything, like I did everything properly, praying five times a day. Um, the thing is, like a few uh, the, these past years, um, I'm kind of having trouble to stay in the religion because of a few things that are going through my head. And the first thing that is that I'm having trouble with is um, uh, Islam is a religion uh, of uh, that is made a long, long time ago. Um, and um, as as long as people existed, they always try to make like religions, right? And I know that uh, a lot of uh, the scholars say that because of the Quran is so perfect, that's how we know that Islam is the right religion and the other religions are wrong. But how are we uh, sure that um, it's not just like um, a man-made religion just to keep other human beings um, actually in, like um, give other human beings rules? Because sometimes like when I think critically about Islam, it's kind of hard for me to be, to believe that um, like like a few things don't make sense to me, and I'm trying to like find answers, and the answers that are given aren't like um, logical to me, and so that's why I'm having trouble to staying into the religion. Okay, so let me get this straight. But do you live yeah. in France? Some do you, are you are you French? No, Belgian. Belgian. Okay. Are you yeah. what, Tunisian? No, Afghan. Afghan. Okay. So yeah. you you said you said you are a Muslim basically, but you're saying you're you're having. Uh, Doubts of Islam Doubts. or certain things you're not understanding, certain things you don't know how to answer. That's what you're saying, yeah. right? Which are giving yeah. you a difficult time to stay in Islam is what you're saying, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you pray? Um, I used to pray, uh, but now I don't. Okay, so you do not pray. And no. a consequence, okay, how is your f f friend circle? Are you friends with, with non-Muslims? Do you have friends, non-Muslim friends that you uh, Yeah, uh, all of my friends are non-Muslims. Okay, so what do you expect... To, to have is first, when you separate your ties with Allah Azza wa Jalla, you completely cut every tie uh, and relationship you have with Allah because the word Salah comes from the word Salah, which means the connection yeah. with, you, with your creator. So you cut your ties, you cut your connection with Allah Azza wa Jalla, number one. Number two is a result of that would be engaging in sin because the biggest sin is to leave the prayer itself. So as yeah. a, an assumption that will come of that is that definitely you will be engaging in other sins. And 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 on top of all of that, having a, a friendship of non-Muslims in which the only thing they, they are going to tell you is negative things about Islam, is uh, let's do something which is not permissible Islamically. Let's go to a place which you should not be going to Islamically. Let's be in a in a, in a place in which you shouldn't be in Islamically. Let's be alone with, with non mahramat That's the only thing yeah. you're going to get. So a, a logical outcome of all of that is what you're calling doubt. You've opened your door to the shaitan. You basically removed every shield of protection that Allah would protect you from all of the whispers or evil the doubts or ideas that Satan can put in your mind. You completely removed all of those barriers and you opened the door, the door out wide for the shaitan. And then, of course, you're going to have these questions. But the reality, this is what happens with most people in, I believe, in your situation. What happens with them is the following. They start committing sins. However it starts, it's irrelevant, right? I'm not asking how does it happen. But when people start doing sins, this is what they do gradually. They start doing sins. And then because they start doing sins, they have a, a, this idea in their mind. They have a cognitive dissonance that, that starts to formulate. That is, is, if Islam is true, and I'm doing all of these evil deeds and sins, then that would mean definitely I'm going to be punished. And I'm doing all of these evil deeds and sins. So Islam must be false because I don't want to be punished. So that becomes the, the how your mind actually starts to work. So you start to disprove Islam, not because you are genuinely, I'm not talking about you now, I'm talking in general. Right? So those people start to disprove Islam, not because Islam is false or they, they have actual genuine doubts about Islam, but because they have started doing a lot of evil deeds, a lot of evil sins. And they know that they, if Islam is true, then there is this outcome. So they want to disprove it. Why do they want to disprove it? Because they know if, if it's true, then I'm going to be punished. There is hellfire. Then this is not a game anymore. I cannot be do, living the life that, the way I'm doing. So this cognitive dissonance becomes in your mind. And most of them end up pretending that they've disproved Islam because they can fulfill their desires this way. They can live the life the way they, the way they want to live. They think they're being free because their friends are not Muslim. And they're telling them, okay, this is the right way to behave, you know, the liberal way to behave, you know, the John Stuart Mill is telling you that the divine Lord, the, the maker, the creator, John Stuart Mill. Now, you can do whatever you want as long as you don't harm, harm anyone else. Start following the religion of the West. You start okay. following the teachings of the West. So this is this happens with a lot of people. But let's 
let's now see the demonstration of that. What is, well, tell me a question now. What is these doubts that are coming to your mind that are telling, that are making it hard for you to say in Islam? Tell me. And by the okay. way, look, the reason I mentioned that is for people listening as well. It's not necessarily you. So like, there's a lot of people who come, who are in your shoes maybe, or might be different even the, than your shoes. They might come across these things in their life. They might start stop praying. They might start having non-Muslim friends. So the reason I mentioned these things is not you specifically. I'm mentioning, mentioning generally for people watching, okay? But you go ahead, tell me, what is that, the question? One of the questions that you have, what is the biggest problem that you have? Go ahead. Okay, so um, thank you for your answer. Um, I understand where you're coming from. But the thing is, I never really had a hard time with uh, like staying away from bad things, you know, like I never had a, a problem staying away from alcohol or zina or whatever, like it never tempted me. So it, I'm like, re when, when I believe something, I'm like really good at following that, uh, that, that and I, I don't get tempted a lot. Obviously, small things like um, uh, skipping a prayer and stuff, that was sometimes a bit tempting. But the big sins, I never really had problems with staying away from that. And my non-Muslim friends, they are uh, like, we mostly just do like girly artsy stuff. So we don't really do anything very harmful or sinful. But the problem that uh, with the doubts and the question, maybe I, uh, uh, maybe I was a bit like confusing um, the first time when I talked. Um, but um, the uh, the problem I'm having is that um, like I'm going going to give an example. It's a lot easier to explain it that way. Okay. So um, let's say you have two kids, right? You have kid number A and kid number B. The one uh, the first kid you give him books he can read, he can learn, he can see the world, he travels, and he knows a lot. The other kid you just put in a home and you'd say that uh, Santa exists, Santa exists, and that's the only thing you need to know, right? Obviously, the first kid that is, has seen the world, that has like learned a lot about stuff, is going to have doubts about whether Santa exists or do it doesn't, because he's seen the world, he's, he knows that like there are some things that, uh, doesn't, that, that don't make sense about Santa. But the other kid, like he doesn't, uh, he, he doesn't get the opportunity to look left and right he can only look forward and he can only think about santa and only uh, 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 believe what he is told that is kind of what is happening like uh, i told you i'm afghan right a lot of people in afghanistan they don't know anything else except for religion and so they kind of just stay um uh, past and behind and the western world obviously is evolving and is getting better but the muslim world is just like staying where they are except for Saudi Arabia, obviously, they're doing great. But like, the thing is, if you don't get educated, if you don't uh, think critically, logically, you're going to stay behind in the world. And that's the problem that I'm having with a lot of like Muslim countries is that we are so focused on books, uh, on the Quran, we don't think logically. I'm giving an example, because the question is, like the, the example that I gave, right? So the question is, how do we know that the kid that gets uh, the Santa stories uh, is uh, right in what he does? And the kid that has the doubts is wrong in what he does. Like, how do we know that which, which one of the kid is the right one? Okay. So, I, I really appreciate what you said because it just demonstrated the, the, what I said in the beginning. Before even hearing yeah. your story, you moved on to demonstrate everything I would say. Because first, like, the idea of you saying skipping a prayer, which is a small sin, which is the, one of the biggest sins of Islam, uh, that you can do as a Muslim. If it, it is the second biggest after shirk, you can say. Leaving a prayer, not praying. <laughs> which you would, you would refer to as a small sin. And then you refer to other things as a small sin. Any sin that someone degrades, even if it's a minor sin, you're talking now about one of the biggest sins that a Muslim can do, and you call it a small sin. Even if you do a minor sin and you degrade it, it becomes a major sin because you're degrading something that Allah prohibited you from doing. But you did not degrade a minor sin. You're degrading one of the biggest sins that a Muslim can do, which is to, to skip prayers and leave prayers and not pray them. And you called it a small sin. So that is that that shows like your understanding of what is a, a sin, what is a major sin, or what is not. Second thing, the idea about having the friends that I talked about. These things that you talk about, we're behind. You know what? You you're born in blind faith and all of these things that you say. It is initially what all the Westerners say. Go open their videos and watch what they say. You repeated ex you repeating exactly what they say. You do not realize that you are the one who are blind following those people around you. You are the one who has been brainwashed by what they're telling you in your community. What you're accusing Muslims of, this idea of Santa that you, that you quoted, is what happened to you. What, what the people around you, not Muslims around you, they've brainwashed you to think that you, you have a blind faith while you, you have a blind faith in them and what they're telling you. Now, the idea of like Santa, I'll tell you why the idea of Santa is completely ridiculous because it is a false equivalent. The person who says I'm a Muslim 
does not believe in Islam, while the rest of the world already knows that God doesn't exist and he believes in God, for example. The rest of the world knows that Santa doesn't exist. So when you have majority of the people on the planet already know that Santa doesn't exist and some child believing that Santa exists, you cannot make that and, and make a comparison with God, which most of the people on the planet believe they exist. That's number one. Number two, Santa has no, no one who came, who, messengers throughout history, throughout mankind who came in different times, different localities, never, never met each other, that all of them spoke about the existence of Santa. And they told you Santa, Santa exists. And they did perform miracles and acts in history to demonstrate to the people that they've been sent by Santa. And then they brought you a letter, a revelation from Santa. And they said, look, this is a revelation from Santa that you need to follow, which has guidance, right? Which has right and wrong and, and the things that you need to do and the things that you need to follow. So that is a, the biggest false equivalent that I've seen in my life. No Muslims, to the, Muslims don't just believe because they're told to believe. There's evidences why they believe in what they believe in. Prophet Muhammad, when he came to his people, he didn't come and tell them, oh, just believe Santa, and then he went to back to his house or something. Prophet Salam performed miracles. The people saw him doing these things. They saw him do, multiplying food. They saw him doing all of these things with their own eyes. They've, they've seen the Quran itself. He came with the message that they could not imitate, that, they, that their best people, the most eloquent Arabs, have submitted to and, and called it magic. They submitted to the idea this is not a natural thing. This is a supernatural thing. The, the, his own people. So when you compare that with a ridiculous idea, for example, like the idea of Santa, which already the people telling you about Santa know that is not real. The parents that tell their child about Santa, they already know Santa is not real. The rest of the planet, anyone who can use his intellect and mind, he will know that Santa is not real. But you mentioned a very interesting point. You see, when he goes out in the world, he will know Santa is not real. When you go out in the world, you will know more why the creator is, is real. The more you grow up, the more you investigate, the more you study, you will see that, that this universe cannot come from nothing. The complications, the, the sophistication of the universe, the way everything around you, your own body, your genes, your genomes, all of these things, that this can never be out of nothing. This has to, there has to be some sort of a creator that brought all of this into existence. So if, if that child does what you said he will do, he will come to the conclusion that what his family told him or parents told him is actually the truth. Now, the last idea is this idea of like, you know, advancement and you know, you got to be advanced and only Saudi Arabia is advanced. No, just many countries are advanced from a worldly perspective. You've got other Khalish countries which are also advanced. If you look at Qatar, if you look at Dubai, if you look at Emirates and all of these countries, that doesn't mean that they're advanced from a spiritual perspective. They can be advanced from a worldly perspective, but not a spiritual perspective. But what you're doing is, is this, is you're looking at this, a very small part of history and you're, you're making a conclusion. Muslims had an empire that lasted for over 600 years, the Ottoman Empire. They were the strongest people in the world at the time. They were the most advanced, worldly, and from an Akhra perspective, there were people practicing their religion. What does that prove now? It doesn't prove anything. So just because today you have a civilization in the West that tends in, in history today, that has the power for a certain period of time, that does not mean now everything they believe is true. And you can look and, and look, this is the thing. If you actually study and look at the outcomes of their teachings, the outcome of, them, of their morality, you'll understand why those people are the, the most miserable people they could be. Highest divorce rates, highest murder rates, no, no, no safety anywhere in their countries, in their lands. An imam was just stabbed to death in America, just like one or two days ago. He was stabbed to death. The people in some parts of America, they go, they steal up to $1,000, and there's no persecution by law. They can go and steal up to $1,000. Left and right, people accusing each other of like sexual harassment and this and this. The UN has a study called Women Abused Every, Every Day, Everywhere, which is about US and the West. The study is just about them. It's tens of thousands of women. It's one of the biggest studies that is done by the UN. You look at the depression race, the biggest study that was done by Blanche Flower and Oswald. The, the, the women since the 1960s until uh, to the 2000s, they're the more depressed than ever since feminism, since the advancements of the liberal period that you're talking about. You look at people in Palestine today, that they are butchering people day and night. Over 20,000 20, children, they're killing them. We're talking just about children, let alone men and, and women and older people and all of that. Where is all of this human rights and love and all of this morality? And where is this? Go look at these people. They're, they're often themselves because of depression, the, the depressed state that they are in. Women fighting with, with, with men and women and men fighting with women. This is the, the state of the Western world that you're talking about. Their boys, the children cutting off their genitals when they're four, three or four. They don't even know whether they're a boy or a, or a helicopter or a, or a, a plane, what they, what they identify as. Is this the advancement that you're looking for? This is the advancement that you're talking about? Okay, they can be advanced a little bit here by, by biological uh, uh, advancements or weapons or this and that, which they, in the end, all of the riches that they have have taken from Muslim lands. In the 1880, in the 1800s and 1900s, 80% of the, of the African countries were under colonization. They went, they took the oil, they took 
Look what happened to Algeria, for example. Or look what happened to Morocco and any of these countries. So just the fact that you steal someone else's resources and then you end up becoming an empire after stealing someone else's resources, what does that prove? Look at their state and situation and their people. This is the advancement that you're calling us to. So we can have our children, they don't even know their own gender and our wife is, is the leader of, of the house and I sit home, cook and clean. Is that what you're asking me to do, right? Is that the advancement that you're calling us to do? The Western advancement? I'm, I'm honestly like baffled by what you're saying. You know, I, like, I don't know what you're talking about, like what Western world that you're referring to because this is the Western world that I'm living in. Okay, okay. Um, okay, so I, I get what you're saying. Thank you for that. Um, uh, yes, the Western world isn't perfect, right? But um, would I rather live in Afghanistan, which is also a Muslim country? They are they uh, wake up and uh, are Muslim from uh, morning until night. But or would I rather live in a Western country? I would think it's the choice is quickly made, right? Like like murders and everything happens in both worlds, and the rapes and all those things, all those bad things that you just mentioned in the Western world actually also happens in Muslim world. So it, does, it, does, it doesn't mean that because uh, it's a Muslim world, it's better. If, if, if it would be, my parents wouldn't be here, you know? Like, I, I get that. And I also, the thing that you said, which was really good, that you said that when uh, the, per that the child that goes and sees the world, sees that the world is too perfect to just be made out of nothing, I agree with that because I cannot believe that there is no God, okay? I, I accept and I know that there is a God, um, because the world is too perfect to be to to not just have existed uh, through a big bang, but how do we know that uh, Prophet Muhammad um, uh, um, came with the right religion and just didn't make it up a few years ago? Because I know you say the miracles that he did, but why doesn't give Allah the, the miracles to our generation? Because we just have to trust someone that did the miracles a long time ago to people that weren't that so so smart. Like the people back then, they weren't so smart as they are right now. So if you put a ma magician there, they are obviously going to think, oh, wow, look, he made some, do, uh, he did something. And uh, it, it could just be science uh, for, for all we know that he did. And they call it a miracle. But if the same person would do that right now in front of me, I would be like, okay, like this is this and this is that because I think logically, right? Um, how do we know that he didn't just go and like make, make everything up just so he can make a religion? How do we know that he is the true prophet of, because I believe Allah, right? I, I, I know that Allah exists. I just have a hard time believing in the hadiths and believing in the prophets. That's my problem. And that's my issue. Okay. So uh, we're coming again to the same idea of being brainwashed, brushing yeah. off the, the Western lands and saying that, oh, they have some mistakes, but look at the Muslim world. They're doing this, doing this. It shows the level of brainwashing that a person has. So if you agreed that like there is problems here and there, then you wouldn't highlight the Muslim lands to begin with as if they're an exception to the rule. So now what you're doing is you took that your first stance. I look at the, the non-Muslim world is advanced and the Muslim world is not. Now it became, oh, everyone has mistakes. So why did you come in the beginning then and make the claim that look, oh, the Western lands are advanced. No, they're not advanced. This is the reality. When you look at their behaviors and look at their lives and, and to claim that the Muslim lands have the same thing is completely false. Muslim, most of these Muslim countries that you, that you refer to, even though right now they start having some problems here and there because they've been influenced like you, they've been influenced by the West. And because they've been influenced by the West, for example, the people influenced by feminism, you see the divorce rates are increasing in some of these lands, but they're still lower. They're much lower still than, than the West. You don't see kids chopping off their genitals in, in Muslim lands. You don't see th this being preached in the schools. You don't see it everywhere and uh, people walking naked in pride parades. You don't see these things. So you can pretend that this is the same case in, in Muslim lands, but it is not. It is nowhere near the importance of family, the importance of obeying God, the, the fear of, of stealing. In Qatar today, go to Qatar. You can leave your car open in the middle of the road. No one will, will touch you. People leave the laptop. They come three days later in the restaurant. They take it. <laughs> three days later. Now you show me which Western, Western land, Western country you can do this today. Don't, don't try to compare and pretend, as I said in the beginning, pretend as if it's, everyone has bad things. No. It, if you look at this idea, of the moral ideas that I'm telling you about, the Muslim land is far superior for everything I mentioned. I referred to the idea of feminism, the idea of LGBT, all of these things, the, the safety, all of these things. The lands that actually implement some of Islam, not even all of Islam. Does that mean that these countries are perfect? Of course not. They're not, but they're not perfect in the parts in which they're not applying Islam. And the problem is that they're having problems is that they're starting to move away from Islam. The problem is that the divorce rates, rates are increasing is because people are being influenced by feminism. So when you say, oh, oh, well, if this was not the case, my family wouldn't be here. If you look at what happened to Afghanistan, I don't, I, you call yourself Afghani, but I don't know, you've not seen what the, what the US did to your country. 
You've not seen those those people. They, why why they went to your country to begin with? Because of the resources that they had. They went to that country. They tried to force their own things on your country. They're still being kicked out by the Americans. Those so advanced people have the biggest weapons, and they've been kicked out like like losers by a bunch of people who live in the mountains. That may Allah Azza Jal preserve them because they have the religion. They have their their faith in the Creator. And they know this is the truth. They know those people. They might have some advanced material there from worldly weapons, but when it comes to the Akhirah, they have nothing. They fear death. While we know what, what is to come after we die. That's the difference between us and them. So you, your parents might travel and come there. It is because of economic needs. Has nothing to do with that the, the, this land is not good from a moral aspect. Now, and why did they have economic problems? It is because of the same countries that they traveled to. So they traveled to uh, whatever, the US or whatever it is, because the US went to their country and destroyed it. It's the only reason that they have bad economy, that they had to travel in the, in the first place. You are leaving the reason why your country has bad economy which is the West, and then saying, oh, that's why they went to the West. No, they went to the West. They had to go to the West. They had no other options because their countries would be attacked day and night. So uh, clearly, I don't, you see the brainwashing now. When I tell you the history and what, ha what actually happens in history, you start to realize how brainwashed you are by what these people are telling you, leaving all of the facts that I'm, that I'm telling you. Now, the idea of, look, okay, the miracles the Prophet ﷺ did, we have to believe in something that happened in the past. I'm not telling you that. In fact, if you actually follow or watch any of my videos, you'll see I've got many videos uh, on my channel demonstrating the evidences that we can look at today to know that Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God. One example I mentioned is the life of the Prophet looking at his life, investigating his life. Why was he preaching his message? He did not want any worldly things. He, he did not have any issues from a psychological perspective or any, any of these issues he demonstrated. If you study his life from a psychological aspect, you'll come to the conclusion he had to be from the Creator. That's, not, that's not one example. Another example I give, the prophecies of the future the Prophet mentioned that are happening today. We see with our own eyes. What the Prophet said, said will happen. He said, you'll see the barefoot Bedouin Arabs competing in building the tallest buildings. We, te we see the tallest building today in Dubai, you know. He said the reasons why. He said the earth will puke its treasures. And money will become abundant within the Arabs. This is what we see today. The, the earth has puked its treasures, which is called oil. And oil was not a treasure until today. It's called the black gold. It was not really a treasure until today because of the advancement we have. Oil has become the treasure that it is. But in the past, it was not like... It is viewed today. The Prophet ﷺ, he said the land of the Arabs will, will come back green. If you open NASA and look, they will show, it will show you pictures of how the land of the Arabs was and how it is today. And the Prophet said he, it will come back. That means it was in the past. You open Nature magazine, they show you 5,000 5, years used to be meadows and rivers, like the Prophet said. And they show you fossils of animals like whales and this and that, which, which had, need massive amount of water to live in that, in that land. So it was not a desert in the past. How would the Prophet ﷺ knew that? He didn't have studied fossils or no or a satellite slide to see the 10,000 lakes that exist in the deserts of Arabia. Nor could he access the future or know what will happen. Prophet said the Israeli interest will, will, will be widespread. That even Muslims, they're trying to avoid it, they will still be affected by his dust. Now, usury and interest, by the way, cannot widespread unless you have a paper currency. Because in order for you to have usury and interest on a massive scale, you need a lot of gold and silver to lend. And gold and silver is limited, so you cannot have it on a massive global scale. The only way you can do that is you can start printing money and that money becomes the currency. And then you can lend people a lot of money and then uh, have user and interest on a wide scale. So when he said that, it was not even possible in his, in his lifetime because they were using gold and silver as a currency. He said in the future it would become like this, global, that no one would be able to avoid it. I can give many, many uh, examples of that. The Quran talking about the natural world, how, how the universe is created. For example, the universe, the universe being expand, expanding. The Quran referring to natural phenomena, things in the world that we see that no one would even think about at the time. Like the Quran refers to the clouds as heavy. Allah says, وَيُنْشُوا السَّحَابَ الثِّقَالَ And He creates the heavy clouds. Anyone who is just making up information from his mind, he looks at the cloud, he says, look, it's very light. It looks it's flying in the air, it looks quite light. No one will call it heavy. Today we know it weighs tons because of the water. Prophet Muhammad, a desert Bedouin Arab, who is living in the deserts of Arabia, looking at the clouds, he would not know, or he would not call a cloud heavy. What is the reason he would use that reference to the cloud? Talks about the mountains, how they have deep roots within the earth. That mountains stabilize the earth. Now, today we know there's something called isostasy. Because mountains, we, we didn't see that before. We didn't know how mountains are, are even formed. They're tectonic plates hitting one another. One goes up, one goes down. The biggest part of the mountain is actually down. That's why Allah refers to the mountains as pigs. And it says it stabilizes the earth. Because when there's a part of the mountain going down, it pushes the crust of the earth. And when you push the crust, there is less movement and there is less collisions of tectonic plates. Therefore, there's less, less, less earthquakes. How would Prophet Muhammad know any of this information that the, that the mountain stabilizes the earth or it has deep roots or any of this? The Prophet the Quran speaks about history that was not known. It was not in the Bible. It was not known, written or any books. For example, like that Pharaoh claimed to be God. This is not in the Bible. It's nowhere else in other scriptures. 
the Pharaoh at the time of Moses. Today we know that Ramses II, who was the Pharaoh at the time of Moses, claimed to be God. How do we know? We discover that because now we can read the heliographics through discovering the Rosetta Stone in the 1800s, which were, were over a thousand years after the death of the Prophet. We couldn't even read the heliographics. We discovered the Rosetta Stone. And now we found in the temple of Abu Simbel in Egypt, we found Ramses II being crowned to be God by Horus and Set, two Egyptian gods that had given him divinity. We found an artifact there and we read this information. How would the Prophet Muhammad do it when they could not even read hieroglyphics at the time? I, look, I can, by the way, I can stay now for two, three hours giving you evidences for why Islam is the truth. You know, that is the easiest thing I could do. Two, three, four hours I can, I can stay here uh, and, and give you reasons why Islam is the truth. The challenge of the Quran that no one is able to imitate or bring something like it. Can, you're welcome to go watch my tafsir class where I, where I briefly went, uh, I give a brief explanation of the verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 23 of the Quran, of why this Quran could not be imitated. And it's still not being imitated historically. Even though they have chat GPT language and all of this nonsense, they're still not able to imitate the Quran or bring anything like it. So when we say you cannot compare everything I just said to your Santa Claus, an imaginary character, I'm saying that for a reason. It's because this is an evidence-based faith. And the only blind, the only person who's following blind faith is the one who's following his European friends, uh, the coconuts that the, the, the went and and took over other people's land and persecuted them and took their resources. And now they think they're superior somehow. This is the person who's actually brainwashed. Not the person who's following the correct revelation coming from the creator, coming from Allah. Those European friends of yours, they don't even believe in a creator. They look at the, at the universe, they look at the electromagnetic waves, they look at the planets and stars and the creation of the galaxies and they tell you, oh, this came from nothing. It's actually uh, like this, like magic. They look at you, they look at the, the human beings, the sophistication, they tell you there's a magic custard. And that magic custard throughout tens of thousands of years started becoming a fish and the fish started walking and having legs. And then they, there was some monkeys and then from those ancestors we become we come today. This is what your uh, European quote unquote friends believe. It's the yeah, most ridiculous. Right. So like honestly, sister, I don't know why you are like, okay, go ahead. No, um, I your answer is really, really good because I it, it made me it, it made it a lot clearer for me. Thank you for that. Um, and yeah, you're right. I don't agree with the Western people. Uh, 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 we don't come from fishes or apes or whatever. Uh, God is there. Allah is there. I tr believe that. And now the thing that, that you said about um, what the uh, Prophet Muhammad um, uh, saw in the future, that is really good. So I agree with that. I think I'm just going to look a, a f uh, at a few more of your videos and just try to um come back to the uh, uh, religion but um one last question that i have for you is like why didn't allah um give the the uh, you, you know like why doesn't he come to us to show us like in a dream or something like uh, that he is there why do why did he only do that with prophet muhammad and he doesn't do it with everyone because that would be fair if i would see him in a dream and if i would hear something in a dream i would like uh, it would it'll be a lot easier to be a good muslim than to trust someone that like lived a, a, lo a long time ago like that that makes it uh, so much harder for us as muslims if allah loves us why doesn't he uh, give that same message to every single one of his cre uh, creations okay first i appreciate the, the 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 sincerity because a lot of people are not sincere even if they get the answers they still argue for sake of argument so i appreciate the sincerity that, that's a very good thing now when it comes to allah Azzajal coming to us you know look if i like and i don't mean this in a, in a degrading way let's let me not use you as an example let me use someone else if there is someone in my house and i say come here and he comes and i say go there go who who has more authority me or him uh you you me so who, who is go, who is the master and who's the servant in this relationship when i say go over there come come here Come, I want you to come, uh, you know, three o'clock when I'm sleeping, come to me. Who, who yeah, is the you master are. and who is the servant? So if we tell Allah to come and Allah has to come to every single one of us when we want him to come to us, then, then it does not make any sense to say that Allah is the creator and he's the king and he's the master and we're the servants. You now, you, you flip the relationship now. It becomes that we are the one demanding God to do what we want him to do. Show me this sign the way I want or you're not there, you know. So I'm, I'm now dictating God, to God what to do. So I'm the God in this relationship. He's not God because he's listening to my commands. We are created by Allah Azza This life is a test. If Allah comes to everyone in a dream and shows him an, an undoubtable miracle of his existence that he can observe empirically, then there's no point of this life being a test for people. There's no life for us to for Allah to test us. And Allah saying those who believe in the unseen in the beginning of the Quran, chapter 2. There's no point. How can you believe in the unseen? You've already seen it. Uh, this, uh, this question of yours is already answered in the Quran. 
Allah says, mm-hmm. if we sit down uh, upon them a sign from the Sama, their necks will be tied to it. That means if they, if they believe or they will be punished. Because they've already seen evidence now, no point. That's why when you look at the previous civilizations, when they had all of these biggest, big miracles that Allah has shown through the prophets, when they didn't believe, they were punished. Because now, that's it, you've seen the evidence now. You've seen a big miracle, empirical miracle. We're talking about empirical ones. You can see with your own eyes, things happening which are supernatural. You still disbelieve, therefore you require punishment. So this life is a test. And people are being tested. Therefore, it would not make any sense for Allah just to come to every single individual. And there's no point then. Then why would Allah put you in this life to begin with? He just create you in, uh, in the sama and you can see him and that's it. There's no point of him put, putting you on earth to begin with if he wanted you to see him. And the prophets and messengers, they are they are uh, communicating with Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah gives them a revelation. That is the reason they communicate with Allah Azza wa Jal directly. is because they are used as agents to give the revelation, the guidance to us. And then the test is whether we will follow their guidance, the revelation that, that they brought, or we will choose our own desires and what we want to do and what and how we want to do it. This is a test. This is why we exist in this life. And if Allah Azza wa were to appear to every single individual, that would be the most confusing anarchy that I've seen in my life. Like imagine, look, Allah comes to me and he says that, for example, I'm the next messenger. And then Allah comes to you and he says, I'm not the next messenger. Who should we trust? You know, every person comes and says, Allah said to me, give me your house. You know, give me the keys to your house. And the other person comes and says, no, no, no. Allah said, actually, do not give me the keys to your house. This becomes, it be, it's going to become ridiculous to say that every single individual is going to have communication with Allah and he's going to bring information from his own mind, of his experience with, with the divine. Those prophets and messengers are selected for a reason. And that reason is, is because they are the best of their communities. And their job is just to deliver the revelation to the people. Then people take the revelation, follow the revelation, or they choose their desires and say, there's no other way. Allah says, if they don't res- respond to your message, فَعَلَمْ أَنَّمَا يَتَّبِعُونَ أَهْوَاهُمْ They know that they're following their desires. وَمَنْ أَضَلُّ مِمَّنْ اتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ بِغَيْرِ هُدَى مِنَ اللَّهِ Who's more misguided than the one who follows his desires without any guidance from Allah? Who's more misguided? There's no one more misguided than this. Uh, those people who believe they're apes, you know? This is, the, this is the level of misguidance you will reach without revelation, without guidance coming from Allah Azza wa So it would not make any sense to say that Allah will come to people and the, whenever they want to become how they want evidence to appear because this life is a test no i get that yeah but the thing is like why does he want to want to test us in that way like he knows that we are going to suffer for the rest of our lives if we go to hell why but, like doesn't he love us like why how does do he want to... us to suffer that way how, how do you go to... i'm not suffering you're suffering it's a, it's a different story huh? I look, no, I'm i know i know now. yeah i'm asking now right so but, but because you're assuming everyone is going to suffer his life that's not the case you only suffer when you choose to suffer how, might, how do you go to hellfire hellfire is a choice you yeah but the test go, is really hard he could have made the test easier the, who said the test is, is really hard the, in because fact, it's hard you, to believe is way to, no, no, no. it's hard to look at the universe and recognize there's a creator it's hard the fact no, is you don't even need to okay so step by step let me let me take your step, yeah. step so the first step we already agree is completely easy because even you don't need to even look at the universe we know that children are born believing in a creator studies i've mentioned multiple times upon this like yeah. just embarrassed study in, in oxford university etc so we already b- born believing in allah and allah said allah said in the quran that he's already put that so that part there's nothing hard about believing in a creator because you're born innately with that belief in it Second thing, establishing Islam as the truth, I've already given you evidences now that I've not come across a single person who's been able to refute it. Or, or will never be anyone who's able to refute it. So there's nothing hard to come to the conclusion that Islam is the truth if you actually done some research and you, you spent your time asking the correct people. Then there is no such thing as it's difficult to come to the conclusion that Islam is the truth. Now on top of all of that, I would say that Allah Azza wa is the most merciful with his, with his creation. And it is the biggest act of ingratitude to claim that it's difficult. When Allah Azza wa says in the Quran that if you, or says to you generally, when you do a good deed, he gives you 10 times the reward. And when you do a bad deed, it's just one bad deed. If you have an intention to, to do a bad deed, but you don't do it, and you stop, Allah gives you a good deed. <laughs> you were going to do something wrong, but you didn't do it, so Allah gives you hasar, it gives you a good, a good reward. Allah says that when you give sadaqah, when you give zakah or charity or any of these things, that he multiplies you until, until 700 and even more, if he wills, if he wants. This is when you do good things. Now, and, and he's anything that he prohibited you from doing, he's given you a better alternative. Okay, do not have intercourse before marriage? He's allowed you to marry. He's given you an alternative. Okay, don't drink alcohol, drink juice, drink milk, drink honey, drink water, drink anything else. This is not good for you, so don't drink it. So it is an act of mercy for him to tell you not to do these things because they're harmful for you. But to claim and pretend that this t- test is difficult when you're literally getting 10 times your, your deed by doing one deed, you read the Quran, each letter is 10 uh, hasanat. Each letter is 10 hasanat. And, and Allah says in the Quran, in hasanat you have if you do good deeds, they remove bad deeds without you doing anything. So the minor sins that you do, just doing good deeds is enough for those minor sins to go away. 
all of them bad deeds that you do, how do you get rid of them? You just repent. You sincerely regret the action. You don't want to come back to it anymore. You make the intention. I'm not going to come back to this anymore. And you stop doing the action and you sincerely regret and you pray to Allah, you forgive it. What is hard about, about the, the, this? I, there is nothing easier <laughs> than to follow what Allah Azza have told you to do. That's how the Prophet ﷺ said in the deen, yes, really the religion is easy. A man came to the Prophet ﷺ. Allah is not asking you to fast every Monday and Thursday to uh, pray 24 hours. He's only giving you five prayers. And each prayer takes two to three minutes, 15 minutes of your day. You're going to pray. No, and but it is following, it is, hmm. uh, following Islam isn't hard. Like, it's good. Like, like just like you said, uh, don't eat, uh, don't drink alcohol. It's good. Like, I agree with everything that is Islam, like, says about those things, right? Like, no alcohol, no, no, no sin. Uh, uh, um, following that is easy. The hard part is believing... Um, that something that like the logical part, I think the most thing that I'm struggling with is the logical part. But you explained it with uh, uh, that Prophet Muhammad like uh, saw uh, things in the future. And that is something that makes me believe a bit more because I'm like, OK, that that is logical. Like he, he wouldn't have known uh, so many years ago. That helps. But for example, like it, for me, it's really hard to just like be like, um, how do how do we not know that um, that uh, like. It would be so easier for me to be uh, like, like a hundred percent if Allah just like even sent like a little angel to me just just to give a small little message. Did that I, would did make I, it so much easier to believe a hundred percent. Honestly, know? honestly, like look, you you're just again, now we're going back in a circle now because we already yeah. dealt with this point. And and in, initially you're exactly saying what the same disbeliever said to the prophets. You're saying the exact same thing. They said. They said, why wouldn't Allah speak to us or a sign come to us? <laughs> the yeah. same, thing, same thing exactly you're saying is you're repeating the same things as those believers said. Then Allah said, he says, Qad ayati. we made the signs clear to people who believe. You, look how you brushed away an evidence which is 100% it should give you certainty. Like for example, you made one, I, I give you multiple evidence, but you focused on one, for example, it's the idea of knowing the future. I was saying that makes me believe a little bit more. Okay, you explain to me, how is it possible? If, if it was not 100% the case, if it's not 100% true, how is it possible for Prophet Muhammad ﷺ to know this information? Give me now the logical alternative. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't have the answer to that because I, I, I trust that that, that, that is, is like special, what he did. The no, thing no, not, that he... not special. Not special. Okay, well, why other people are not able to do it? Special is not... It's not yeah. This is revelation from God. If you, if you make a claim, it is not revelation. This is my, the, my argument now. If you say, because if you're saying it's not 100% and it's just a little bit more, it should be 100% already. But you're saying it's a little bit more, it's not 100%. Then where is that doubt coming from? Now, you give me the alternative. The other explanation that you have that you can provide in which he got this information from, that is not from God. Mm -hmm. That no one else in history was able to do, but only him. Yeah, but like, the thing is, like, Maybe he just really knew um, science really good. Okay, that could so be a thing. Again, we didn't, talk, we didn't just talk about natural phenomena. And, yeah. and how would he know science from where? Where is he going to learn it? No one at the time knew this information that I'm telling you. Where is he going to get it from? Well, well learn science from where? Learn, there was no universities at the time. There was no uh, Irish tile and, and uh, those people teaching at universities or something. There was no such thing. He was living in the deserts of Arabia. And, and most of the, the things that the, the Greeks believed were, were false. So where did they learn that science from? If he went to learn from the Greeks, he would learn that the earth is flat. The human be the baby is formed like a small baby in the human beings and then it grows like this. Or, or a half of it is, fo is formed and then the other half is formed. He would learn all of this false information the Greeks used to believe. So where did he learn that science from? And, and I, don't only mention, I didn't only mention science. I told you he said things we will be doing today. How is that related to learning science or not learning science? He's telling you what the actions that we will be doing. He's talking about, about how, uh, what will happen to uh, things which are in the economy, in the society, like interest and usury and these things. How would he know any of this? I don't know. Okay, so when you claim it is not 100%, you need to, you talk about rationality and how you're being rational, then you need to give me a rational explanation alternative to this idea. If he was not a messenger of God, you should have another explanation. And if there is no other explanation, then it is 100% a fact that he is a messenger of God. And this is a revelation and this is evidence. And then it's not hard as you claim. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, okay, okay, so, <laughs> so look, look. Okay. Yeah, yeah, look. No, but this helped, about, this helped. Yes. Yeah, that's fine, that's all right. Just think about what we said, inshallah. If you, unless you got any other questions, just, just think about what we said. Really, like just sit, uh, sleep on it, as they say in, uh, you know, in English. They tell you just sleep and next day uh, ponder on the information, think about it, and then you'll, you'll understand the, the points I'm making to you. Because the fact is, I know if you use, if you have any rational sense, if you have any common sense, you cannot reject. I cannot convince myself Islam is not the truth. 
-hmm. even if I try, even if I have the best argumentative person, even if all of the atheists gather around me and they try to give me information, it's not going to affect me because they're not going to be able to. There is no other rational explanations that you can provide to respond to the points that I made. The only rational explanation is that he was a messenger of God. And that's why all of these other religions, the best they can do is to, to try to attack uh, the Prophet did this, the, this, this, that. They don't never attack the source of Islam. They never attack the Quran, the information within the Quran, the evidences of Islam that we put forward because they cannot refute Yeah, that's things. true. They cannot refute these things. They have to rely on other things they, to try to pretend that Islam is not the truth and, and live in their delusion thinking that the religion is the truth. So, yeah, that's yeah. true. Okay, think about what I said, inshallah. You got any other questions before I let you go? Yeah. No, that well, was it. Thank you. Security. Okay, no problem. Okay, I'll let you go.